Okay, we're back. This will be my last one tonight because I gotta get to bed soon. It's like three o'clock. <laughs> Here's our two ground rods out there. Remember them? Go to the ground side of this capacitor. The other one going. Remember, you remember all that. We already talked about this. Notice we're pulling three and a half amps now. We've got the 100 watt, the 38 watt, and this guy all in parallel. And this coil here with the amp meter, obviously in series, but those are all in parallel. And as we've seen, oops, that one wasn't hooked up. As we see when we hook up, oops, we see it actually it does dim it. It drops the voltage when we hook up in the other bulb. Um, so, but what you notice here is when I unhook it, the current goes down, and when I hook it up. And these are in parallel, which that makes sense because now current goes up. So resistances in parallel would um, the the total current would be the sum of all resistances in parallel. So that this follows Ohm's law naturally. Nothing's different here about it. Um, but one interesting thing is that yeah, we have these two ground rods outside there that anyway. Uh, uh, One's in about six foot, the other one's in about eight foot. So I'm going to unhook the ground rod. You see the lights go out. See that? That's the ground wire there. Anyway, you notice how, take, pay attention to the brightness. Now, I know on the camera they look fairly bright, but really that bulb's only about 20% lit. I'm going to take this clip now and I'm going to put it on my house ground. So I've got this chassis over here, power supply. And when I touch this to it, you're going to see quite a difference in the amount of current that can be put, drawn. So now these bulbs are at least twice as bright as they were. The motor's running twice as bright. Our current is all the way up to almost 5 amps. Now the motor gets more efficient as it speeds up, so it drops a little bit there. So you're seeing the, at least an amp or two, almost two amps more than what we were seeing. The voltage is at 70 volts. Now unhook a bulb. This one gets even brighter. The voltage goes up to 84. Just from using the house ground. So it does indicate that the more surface area a ground has, which mine is, is going to the box, it's, it's probably it's got a ground rod somewhere, you know, it's going to the water pipes, all that crap. So that's a much better ground. I don't think anything's backfeeding because I don't think it's happening, period, because we've proven it with the ground rods being hooked up. Literally, I can pull the ground rod out of the ground out there and it stops working. Um, so just the running total here, we're going to look at our kilowatt hour meter and it has now been running for five hours and five minutes through just different combinations of bulb and whatnot, but there's always been a load on it during this time. As you can see, we're still pulling zero amps, zero watts, zero volt amps, 60 hertz, power factor one, total kilowatt hours consumed over the five hour period is zero. The electric company is just the pump. All they're doing is changing the frequency and 30 times a second this terminal is positive and based on the law of magnetic attraction the sea of electricity will be attracted towards the positive potential one oh, um, I guess it would be one thirtieth of the cycle of each second. So it's really only using half of the, the signal coming from the AC line. So it's fine for incandescence, maybe some motors, resistive heating, whatnot. Or this thing could definitely turn a small generator that could charge my battery bank. Next thing I'm going to do, since this thing's not using any power, I'm pretty sure. I could run it off of one of these inverters and not draw any current. Perhaps with my ground rod, not draw any current. And charge my battery bank. Wouldn't that be an interesting thought?